grade. Are you ready for another awesome week of grammar? I hope so. Today we're talking about punctuation again. Now punctuation makes our writing and our speaking more interesting. Did you notice what I asked you right at first? I said, are you ready for another awesome week of grammar? If that's a question, that ends with a question mark. That's punctuation. Can you imagine if we didn't have any questions? How boring would that be if everything we just had to say was complete sentences and just periods at the end? That would be so much more difficult. But when we add a different kind of sentence that we can end with a question mark, things get more interesting. Now, punctuation was also our exclamation point. Right? If you're really excited about something, you're going to say it with strong feeling. That's going to be an exclamatory sentence that ends with an exclamation mark. All right, so we've got our periods, quotation marks, sorry, question marks, exclamation marks. Those are all going to be our end marks. When we're talking about punctuation, we also are going to talk about apostrophes. We're going to talk about commas. We're going to talk about quotation marks. All of those things that help make our writing more clear. Now, I noticed in some of you guys' journals from now two weeks ago, I saw a ton of awesome punctuation. I saw kids that were using exclamation points when they got excited. I saw them using quotation marks when somebody was talking. Today we're going to look more at some of those specific rules. So if you take out your grammar sheet for today, it says Monday at the top. We're going to review some of those rules. We learned the first five last week. We're going to do rule number six through 13 today and then we're going to practice on the back. Later this week, you're going to get another opportunity to use your punctuation when we get into some creative writing. All right, let's get going on looking at our rules. All right, now make sure your name's on the top of the sheet. Today is September 21st, 2020. As we're going through these rules, I think it will help you a ton if you're underlining along with me um, so that it makes it so that you're underlining the most important things. That'll help you follow along. Rule number six, put a comma between locations and an address. All right, let me get mine a little closer. All right, so between the city and state or country. So I live in Dallas, comma, Texas. So Dallas, comma, Texas, because it's between the city and the country. So I live in Milwaukee, comma, Wisconsin, would be somewhere that you would put a comma. Between the state or country and the rest of the sentence. Bart lives in Omaha, Nebraska, with his parents. Omaha, right, because it's between Omaha, Nebraska. And then it goes between that and the rest of the sentence. So Bart lives in Omaha, Nebraska with his parents. Notice those commas also give us the little breaks when we read. So Bart lives in Omaha, Nebraska with his parents. Okay, so it's not just Bart lives in Omaha, Nebraska with his parents. Punctuation helps us know when to pause as we're reading. Next, we're into quotation marks. We're gonna use quotation marks before and after the exact words of a speaker. All right, so if Mr. Bauer said, it's time for math class, it would go around, it's time for math class, at the beginning and then at the end. It wouldn't go around Mr. Bauer said, because Mr. Bauer didn't say, Mr. Bauer said it's time for math class, Mr. Bauer just said, it's time for math class. So that would be quotations at the start and quotations at the end. Let's look at that. Jay said, comma, quotation marks, I am hungry, exclamation point, quotation marks. All right, we'll get in more specifics with quotation marks a little bit later. Put quotation marks before and after the exact words from a book, story, or poem. So the author describes Jim as, quotation marks, a tall, thin man with a friendly grin, period, quotation marks. All right, so the author described Jim as that. So that would be what's in quotation marks, right? Because the whoever wrote the sentence took the author's words out of the book and had to put quotation marks there because the author said it, not the person who wrote the sentence. All right, sentences. 
put a comma before the coordinating conjunction in a compound sentence and after an introductory clause in a complex sentence. We're going to learn a ton more about that later, but for now, let's look at it. Don played golf, comma, and I played tennis, right? That's kind of two separate sentences. Don played golf, I played tennis. A comma is going to go in the middle there. Here's a complex sentence with this, with this clause at the beginning. After Trey left the game, comma, his team scored a touchdown. Okay, so it kind of breaks up our sentence. It's not just after Trey left the game, his team scored a touchdown. After Trey left the team left the game, his team scored a touchdown. All right, so think about those natural breaks where you say them when you speak, and that's where a lot of our commas are going to go. Rule 10, put a comma after an adverb or prep prepositional phrase before the subject. So on Tuesday, comma, we went to the movies. On Monday, comma, we had grammar class. All right? Now, we're going to look at what do we do when we have a book or a, a work. Italicize and under, underline the titles and subtitles of full-length published works, such as books, movies, long plays, poems, and newspapers. So italicize or underline. Italics are when you're typing when it kind of gets a little bit slanted. So you can see like here, the giver, see how it's a little bit slanted? When we're writing, we're not gonna write in italics. That's only for when you're, um, only for when you're typing. So if we had the giver, we would underline it because it's talking about a book. Fourth grade, if you were writing a sentence about the novel that you guys are currently reading, it would be in, it, you would underline it. Same with third grade, we're, re we're reading Humphrey currently, Mysteries According to Humphrey, so that would be underlined. Number 12, put quotation marks around the titles of shorter published works. So in Humphrey right now, it's talking about The Red-Headed Leaf of Sherlock Holmes. Now that's a short story. It's not a, no it's not a long novel. So that would be The Red-Headed Leaf, quotation marks, is my favorite Sherlock Holmes mystery. Now, for rule 13, we're gonna talk about separating extra um, interrupting, interrupting phrases. So, use commas to set off interrupting words, such as a positive, nouns of direct address, tag questions, yes and no. We'll learn about that a lot more later, but let's take a peek at it now. And a positive is extra information given after a noun. So Sue, comma, my friend, is an artist. So my friend is telling you more about Sue. So that's why it's going to be set off by commas. A noun of direct address is the person spoken to. So Aunt Jan, comma, will you visit us? So if you were going to say mom, comma, will, may we please have dinner? Whatever it's going to be. You'd put mom, and then your comma. A tag question is a short question at the end of a statement. It is pretty, pretty comma, isn't it? Right? It is, it is pretty, isn't it? Like that little comma would go there. And then also after yes and no. Yes, comma, it is very nice. All right. A lot of these rules, we're going to go into a ton more detail later. So, but for now, let's focus on the most important ones over on the opposite side of our sheet. Flip it over. We're going to add punctuation to this. All right. Excellent. We read Midnight on the Moon during the first week of school. Well, the first thing I notice is there's no end mark. So, we need to put a period there. We read Midnight on the Moon. Ooh, Midnight on the Moon. That's a novel. Right? That's a book that we read. So we would write Midnight on the Moon. We'd underline that because it's a long story. It's a full novel. If you were talking about one of the stories that you read in your reading books, maybe on your Monday story or your Wednesday story, those would be in quotation marks because those are just shorter, shorter stories. But when we're talking about a full chapter book, that would be underlined. Sentence two. On Wednesday, we went to a field trip. Did you hear where my voice broke? Did you hear where I kind of made a little pause? Listen again. On Wednesday, we went on a field trip. It should be after Wednesday. On Wednesday, comma, it's one of those introductory clauses, 
We went on a field trip. What do you think? Super exciting, we should have an exclamation point or just period? Field trips are super exciting. We should have an exclamation point there. Next one. Mr. Bauer, the fourth grade teacher, coaches basketball. Did you hear what? My voice took two little pauses again. Mr. Bauer, the fourth grade teacher, coaches basketball. Ooh, the fourth grade teacher, right? That's more information about Mr. Bauer. So we're gonna need commas. Mr. Bauer, comma, the fourth grade teacher, comma, coaches basketball, period. Now there's one more place we need a period in this sentence. Hopefully you found it, it's after Mr. Mr. Bauer, the fourth grade teacher, coaches basketball, right? We have those short abbreviations. We're gonna have a period at the end of that. I want you to try the last two by yourself. Now, when you try the last two by yourself, what I want you to do is go ahead and listen to me say it and listen to where my voice pauses, all right? This one should have an end mark and you should add a comma. After they went to the movies, they went to the park. Where did my voice kind of pause? Where do I pause in the middle of that sentence? Listen again. After they went to the movies, they went to the park. Where my voice paused, you need a comma, and then at the end of the sentence, you need an end mark. Sentence five. Mrs. Mackey said, I am hungry for dinner. When I get hungry, that's always an exclamation point. So that is an exclamatory sentence. Mrs. Mackey said, I am hungry for dinner. Now, if I said it, I need quotation marks. So what did I say? Did I say, said I am hungry for dinner? I don't know what I say. Well, I just said, I am hungry for dinner, right? This is the only thing I said, I am hungry for dinner. So I need quotation marks around that. Mrs. Mackey said, comma, quotation marks, I am hungry for dinner, exclamation point, quotation marks. All right, excellent. Thanks for working through that with me with your grammar today. Um, hopefully, hopefully it was a piece of cake if you were following along with the video. Monday, this should go back in your Monday folder. Tomorrow, we'll do our classroom practice three together. Good luck on the rest of your work today.